Welcome to today's EMN5. Today I want to focus on fractures that are associated with AACL injuries that you might see on radiograph if you are x-raying these knees. So let's start off with a case. You have a 57 year old um, male, otherwise healthy, out playing basketball in the driveway, twists his knee, falls to the ground. He can actually walk okay afterward but is having some uh, difficulty due to pain. It's a little bit unstable feeling and is gradually starting to swell up now a couple hours later. He's a little bit of questionable tenderness near the head of the fibula, a little bit of joint effusion. So based on uh, auto and you rules, you decide to x-ray based on the age and the tenderness near the head of the fibula. So this is your x-ray that you get. Um, tell me what you see. Um, this is a hard one. There is an abnormality here. It's a fracture. Um, so actually, let me flip on to another one that has the arrow sign for you here. There it is. So I'll flip back to this other one. It's actually a different x-ray. So you can see right here, there's a little avulsion fracture. Um, so this is called a Sagan fracture. Now its significance is that almost 75 to 100 percent of the time it's associated with an ACL injury. Originally it was thought that this fracture, uh, which is an avulsion fracture, was due to an avulsion of the lateral collateral ligament, but it looks like now fevered to be an avulsion of fibular collateral ligament. And the reason that this happens, I mean this is nowhere near the ACL, but you have to think about the mechanism that would cause an ACL tear is actually the same that will cause this avulsion fracture. And if it's significant enough to cause the avulsion fracture, it's probably significant enough to cause your ACL rupture or tear. So you can see this is where it would be attached, where this arrow is. You have an internal rotation and some various stress and that's enough to avulse that off. Just a little uh, review here, thanks to my fellow residents, Dr. Penley and Dr. Chan, uh, when I asked them for some ways that they like to remember varus and valgus. One uh, way to remember it is varus puts air between your legs for varus stress and valgus stress. If you look at how it's spelled, you can kind of picture that V and the L for valgus with the knees together. So again, here's just looking at the mechanism um, causing the twisting and the uh, various stress that can cause the ACL injury. And a little more ACL review, it's going to be hyperextension with some femoral external rotation causing that. And if you remember back from board studying, the terrible triad is going to be your ACL injury associated with MCL uh, ligament tear or injury and a lateral meniscus injury. So here's another fracture. This is the second one I wanted to point out associated with ACL injury. And this is going to be the tibial spine avulsion. So this already you can see has the arrow. And this um, x-ray is particularly nice because it actually has both fractures shown on it. So you have the sigant here and the tibial um, avulsion fracture here. And the difference between uh, these two, in the tibial spine avulsion, it's actually caused by the ACL itself pulling and avulsing. Whereas, as we talked about before, the Sagan fracture is associated with the mechanism that's associated with ACL injury. So three things to remember for this lecture. Sagan fracture is the lateral avulsion of the tibial condyle, and that's associated with the mechanism that is associated with ACL injury, whereas the tibial spine fracture is actually the ACL that's pulling and avulsing the tibia. So if you see either of these on your x-ray, think ACL injury and just have a higher um, index of suspicion and referral to outpatient orthopedics within the next couple weeks for those patients and kind of get them thinking about the fact that they may have an ACL injury. And lastly, just a fun review fact, remember Varus puts air between your legs. And thanks for joining us today on this EMN5.